Hello and welcome to a new video about networks. Today we are going to talk about another variant, not longer Ethernet. We are talking about wireless local area network, wireless LAN. All right? This is our this is our thing. Today we are talking about the basics, what is what is possible, and so on. And uh, then we will dive a little bit further, deeper in the matter. So wireless local area network, wireless LAN, working with radio. Huh? There are two possibilities how to build a wireless network. There's on one hand, there's the infrastructure mode. In infrastructure mode, there is one defined station which has privileges, yeah, which is coordinating yeah, one station. This this is called access point. Okay, so one central coordinating station, and this is called access. So this access point is the point where all the other things, all the other uh, clients, all the other stations connect to. Eh? Access point. Eh? The access point is always sending usually 10 times per second eh? small Data packets. Those things are called beacons. Beacon in Leuchtfeuer in German. So beacon. Ten times a second. These beacons contain data. What is contained is the network name. The so-called SSID, which means service set identifier. Okay. Then the the data rates, support the data rates, and the encryption variant. Of the network eh? and beacons. Beacons are always preferred with the lowest possible uh, uh, data rate. Eh? Send, send with lowest possible data rate, which is one megabyte, megabit per second. Eh? So just because we receive a SSID does not necessarily mean we have a stable network connection. Because once we switch to higher transfer rates, the, the connectivity is usually not that good. The lower the speed is, the further I can get with my, with my signal. So If receiving a beacon packet, so the SSID, yeah, does not mean to get stable connection. This is for sure wrong sentence. This if is wrong. Receiving a beacon packet does not mean to get a stable connection. This is because it's simply simply with low data rate. However, what we can do 
is to monitor the quality of service, to monitor how good is the reception. Yeah? So, but enables the quality of service measure measurement. So those lines usually, yeah, where you see, oh, I have good reception, not that good reception. This is done with this with the help of the beacons. Network name, the SSID, the broadcast of the SSID. This can usually be turned off. This here. This can be turned off. Okay. What does it mean if I have now an access point where I turn off this SSID broadcast? This helps the connection actually, the clients to connect because inside they know, okay, the SSID, they know the encryption, the data rates and so on, but connect. Use password, connect, ready. Uh, if it's turned off, then the client needs to do search for the network. So the client will look for every known network SSID name and if it finds one, it will connect there. Yeah? So it tries all the time, this SSID, is this, is this SSID. So the hidden access point is then looking at this SSID given. Once this fits, allowed to connect. However, this mechanism can be used at, in a attack scenario yeah? If the client is, is issuing the SSID, somebody is receiving this SSID and say, it's me. <laughs> then we think we are connected to a network, yeah? which is known by the client, yeah? which we, have, we were on holiday yeah? two years ago in a hotel and connected there to, uh, uh, I don't know, Beach Wi-Fi with the name Sun, Sunnyside. Okay, SSID Sunnyside. And then my laptop is searching for an SSID Sunnyside. Yeah? And somebody says, yo, I'm Sunnyside. And we are connected and we are already open there. Yeah? So this is this turning off the SSID might cause also security issues. This is what I want to tell. Yeah? So turning off a SSID does not mean necessarily mean it's safer now. Yeah? So the connection could be captured by somebody else. Okay, so this is infrastructure mode. Yeah? Then another possibility is ad hoc. peer-to-peer -peer. mode. Yeah. Here, no station is somehow privileged. Yeah. There's no central station. What does it mean? All stations need to, the, the stations need to organize themselves. Yeah, stations so they need same SSD same encryption Then they can connect to each other. All right. So then they can connect to each other. And let's say here is one station. Here's another station. Here's another station. Yeah. This station has here. This is the sending and receiving. This here might have this.
and this might have this. Those two, yeah, those two can connect to each other. No problem, because this is inside the range of this, and this is inside the range of this. All right. Those two can also communicate to each other, because this is inside of this, and this is inside of this. Even if all are using the same SSID, doesn't mean this can communicate with this, because it's out of range, simply. All right? So this does not mean... Uh, Simply because all are inside the same network, inside the ad hoc network, doesn't mean they can communicate to each other. This is not what ad hoc P2P network is about. Right? So they need to have a direct connection. That's base. Yeah? So we need to have direct connection. Connection to every station. Otherwise, I will not see all stations inside the network. Yeah. Let's see. Let's say here is also one station which could communicate with this one. Then those two can communicate. All right, but this, this, if it this wants to reach this one, there is not a base mechanism which allows a connection. Yeah. So we would need then to have some routing functionalities inside those stations, so that this is this wants to talk to this one. It needs to know that this one is there. So they need to get the information that this one is there to this station. Uh, and then, if this station wants to send to this station, it needs to switch. There needs uh, to be some routing. Routing, routing, I don't care. Some send the packets further. Yeah? This then is called a mesh. Yeah? So this is not a mesh. Yeah? When routing functionality inside the clients is implemented it is called a mesh mesh of networks huh? <sighs> you know this is still in development yeah Right, it's still in development. You can buy it. Yeah? There are some commercial solutions. There are some solutions. There are some some uh, standards already. But there is not a one standard that we can say that's it. This is how it works. Right? No, that's not that's not available. Still in development. So this mesh topic is maybe something for the future. Uh, that it really is widespread. So that's wireless local area network. Yeah? And what is nice about wireless local area network? Yeah? It's using the same layer to the internet. This means it is easy to combine wireless LAN and Ethernet because a network interface cannot even tell if this is received from, from a wireless access point or not. This is transparent because layer 2 is already the same. This is a perfect example on how to exchange layer 1. It's another physics. All right, that's it. Layer one is different. Layer two is 
the almost the same. Okay, so from from the top of layer two, there's no difference at all. It's wireless local area network overview. Next time we are going to talk about you know different transfer rates, different frequencies, and so on. What frequencies we are using, what we have to take care about. Uh, this is then in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.